Good thing you're south of the track. Shout out to Sandra. Are we on? We're going? We rolling? Oh, so that's the intro to the uh, Behind the Blind. Welcome back. We are uh, waiting on Joe. Waiting on Joe. Waiting on Joe. Here you go. Let me help you out there, pal. Wow. Sorry, I'm late. Wow. Yeah, it's okay. We're always waiting on Joe. How can you be late to your own party? I saw a thing actually today on Instagram that cracked me up. said, uh, if you were, can you turn me up a little bit, Q? Yeah. Come on, man. (laughs) It said, uh, if you were, if you were going on a hunt. Oh, yeah, there you go. If you were going on a hunt and you would get a million dollars if the guy you invited with you to come was late, who would you invite? Nate Meyer. Nate. Yeah. <laughs> Nate. Late Nate. Yeah. I actually immediately thought of Nate Flynn. Yeah. Late Nate Flynn. Procrastinate. Nate, all the Nates. All yeah. the Nates are late. And Dave Simon. Okay. Because <laughs> Is he always late? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank okay. you. Hey. Yeah. It is funny. We're always waiting on Dave. If if that's the closest person you want a million dollars from, <laughs> but, yeah, it, was, it was just no so funny. Joke. It was so funny. It was like, oh, if you, you know, tag your tag your buddy, tag your buddy that you know is always you know late. Yeah. And I was like, Nate, Nate Flynn and Dave Simon. There you go. <laughs> Nate Meyer for sure. Nate Meyer's late to his own hunts. I know. I know. <laughs> like, I how know. do you do that? I know. Hey guys, meet here yeah. at five thirty. Yeah. I'll be there at six fifteen. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> me and uh, me and Dakota were talking about that today, driving <laughs> driving down. We were ta- actually we were ta- having the same conversation, and he said he said Nate Meyer, obviously. But yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's kick off uh, a, a final Shout edition. <laughs> Shout out Valley Oaks. <laughs> uh, final edition of Behind the Blind here at Five Land and Holding. And thank you to Tetra Hearing for being our title sponsor. If you get a chance, check them out online, tetrahearing.com. I wore my Tetra Hearing earbuds throughout the entire week, although they weren't really needed a lot because we didn't fire a gun a lot, but I used them today because Thanks, uh, we got Thanks to. For the plug. I yeah, shout out Five Land and Holding. Yeah. We uh, we got to do a little quail hunt today. We decided to give the the uh, cranes the middle finger and go change it up and do something different. And we had a really good time in the beautiful weather yeah. of West Texas, uh, chasing the elusive wild blue quail. I'm gonna say it one more time. You guys need some rain. Yeah, it's, God, so dusty. Dry. it's just brutal. Like my eyes hurt. Everything from the dust today. All those, I don't know, whatever that bush was. What greasewood. Was greasewood. Yeah, mm-hmm. greasewood. I've never yeah. experienced that before. It's like you feel it in the back of your throat. No, I'm talking about those things that kept coming over top of the hood. Well, that's get down that's in it. Those are the leaves. Little buds. Those are the you know. Gotcha. I think yes. you're actually still wearing some yeah, of yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, there's some of them right there. Yeah. We just kind of yeah. jumped right into this. That pop. little, the yeah. little you know, waist high shrub. You know, we yep. drive through. But whenever you're driving through that stuff, I mean, you can you can feel that stuff hit the back of your throat. It's it's nasty. But a little bit of rain would definitely go a long way. We worked maybe, some coveys today. Yeah. Maybe it was sweet. Maybe explain how. How we hunt the quail, or how you guys hunt the quail down here, because you said drive through, right? You know, right, right. People might not understand. It's not your exactly. traditional Midwest yeah. Bob White quail hunt, right? Exactly. For no. sure. Um, so, uh, blue quail are very different than Bob Whites. You know, Bob Whites hold tight um, when they flush. They typically don't fly too far. You know, you can walk a hedgerow and you know kick up covey, get on them a couple times maybe. But blues, uh, they. Um, you know, they run, you know, as soon as they get up, as soon as you flush them, they're going to fly, they're going to land and they are running. Right. Or even if you're trying to walk up or walk them up, you know, they're not going to flush. I mean, they're just going to keep running, 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 running. Your dog's going to keep going on point. Stop it. They're going to keep running. Dog's going to creep back up. Yep. They're going to keep running. Yep. Right. So the way people out here have discovered to hunt them is, with UTVs. Bugs. Surround and pound. Yep. Right. So circle them. Right. Yep. And when I first uh when I first moved down here and started doing it, I mean, I remember the first time I went quail hunting, you know, with Dave and Jaron and Vance and everybody, I was like, there is no way this is like <laughs> gonna work. <laughs> like what we're doing. Yeah. But well it, it just seems out, so dangerous. But it turns out that's how everybody does it down here. You know it's the smart way to hunt. Right. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we get a you know we get a crew of guys you know bunch of dogs and a couple buggies and we'll line up. It's I I try to explain it to people like 
pheasant hunting on wheels. Yep. Right. So you stay in a line. Yep. Right. Just like pheasant hunting, you're pushing through. But the difference is whenever we bump Covey, what we do is we chase them down, watch where they set, right? And then we try to make a huge circle. circle. Cut them circle off. Around them. Right. Yep. Because if you don't, if everybody, if you watch where they go down, everybody stops 20, 30 yards short, and you, everybody gets out and start walking in a line towards them, it's not mm, going to work. They're yep. gone. It's like. Uh, circle them, get the dogs right. out. It's like, it's like having a blocker, uh, mm-hmm. having a blocker whenever yep. you're pheasant hunting, right? Mm-hmm. You got, you know. Four guys at the other end of the tree row, uh, you know. We'll or, push it to you. Or, right. Yep, it's yep. similar, uh, you know, the s- same idea, right? Mm-hmm. So as buggy drivers, what we're doing is whenever we watch the birds go down, right, we are dropping people off, uh, you know, every, you know, 50, 60, 70 <laughs> yards, and we're forming this huge this huge circle so yep. and when the guys get out who get dropped off they're holding their gun up right. and pointing and in the direction of point. where the co- where the covey is right so that everybody else is buggy drivers everybody kind of so has you an don't idea. drive through the birds so you don't, <laughs> yeah exactly so some idiot doesn't drive through the birds right uh, those, those birds were holding tight today, today for right? sure today dogs were working i've never right. seen that we're walking right like so normally that's not step the case on to get no away. that's not the case no so um so we form this huge circle right and i'm talking you know, sometimes three, four hundred yards. I mean, yeah. big, yep. big old circle. Yep. And when everybody's kind of in position, then you let the dogs out, right? When, whenever the dogs get in there and start messing around, a lot of times you have like your first initial covey rise. Whenever mm-hmm. the dogs go on point, you know, right. what se- you know, seven out of ten of them get up, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yep. The dogs, seventy five percent. Right, right. The dogs. And, to clarify, the dogs will flush them. Right, and yep. um, when you start shooting, then the more will get up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, you have that initial covey rise, and uh, you know everybody gets some shooting typically. And what I like is whenever that kind of all settles down, and then dogs start to pick out like the singles and pairs that didn't yep. get mm-hmm. up. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, you know, it's definitely a. There's nowhere else in the country that mm-hmm. you're gonna upland hunt like this. Yeah, it's no, cr- it's, like, nuts. it's 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 nuts. crazy, and it's I tell people all the time, it can be the most fun you've ever had with your pants. It's on. incredible. It's I one mean, of my it favorite is, things to do when we come down awesome, here. So it's know. not the first time we've ever showcased this. No, uh, we try from, to do it every yeah, year. You're right. Yeah, Logan brought um, his family down one year. I mean, it, a couple of years. Yeah, we have had not a lot, but some negative feedback to this concept of hunting because. Mm-hmm. Those have never done this before, right? Yeah, right. So we always, and, and it's never changed. We even did it today. Even though we've been doing this for years, everybody that was a part of this hunt today knew what was going on. But before we started, Joe had a pre-hunt meeting that basically said, here are the rules, yeah, right? Yeah, every time. Every now, time. Don't yeah, ever break right. the circle. Right. You know, you don't break the circle. No we'll talk, you talk about why you don't break the circle. No low birds, obviously. Uh, and blue clear sky is what you're shooting for. Or right. behind you. Right. Or behind so you, of course. The the thing about not trying to break the circle, what that kind of means is like, say, say you shoot a bird, right? Mm-hmm. You don't want to turn your back, walk towards the bird, or try to go get it. Like, just get a mark, and we'll we'll circle back. We'll get the dogs around. We'll, you know, we'll start mm-hmm. hunting dead birds. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is, it's like, if you turn around and start walking away... Right, and you have your back towards back turned towards the circle. You know, nobody else is really nobody else really knows where you are either. Like, mm-hmm. right? It's just it's a safety thing. You know, yes. right. yep. stay focused on what we're doing right here. And if you if you shoot a bird or whatever, we're gonna we're gonna come back. We're gonna get them. Right. Yep. We're gonna, we're That's gonna, why you have the markers. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. A lot of times we throw markers. throw ribbons that have some yep. sort right. of weight at the it, end of exactly. it. Exactly. Yep. You know, I tell people all the time, just throw a marker. Turn around, reload, and get ready because not you know there's going to be a, a you know, another chance. We're going to have another opportunity, yep. so yeah. get ready. Uh, but it's just the idea of you know everybody trying to be on the same page, be where they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. right? Um, do your job exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Do your job. Everyone uh, just needs to do their job, right? So, like you were you were telling me, you told me today, like one thing I didn't realize is like these birds only live like two years. Yeah. Right. The lifespan of these eighteen to like thirty yeah, months, yeah. roughly. Yeah. So, Quail don't have a very long lifespan at all. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Yeah. You really got to get on it. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> the hatch well, is very like, important, and when it's dry as hell out, right. there's no off. hatch. Right. 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 It's, a, it's impossible for so, them to, right. to reproduce. Right. Bird numbers, like in terms of bird numbers right now. We're fortunate to have what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Super, super low numbers, but right. it's because they're in a drought for right. 300 days. Almost, right. So you know? um, quail are... They're very fragile, right? I mean, you have to have ideal conditions right. throughout very key times of the year. And a lot of times that all depends on rain is really mm-hmm. what it's all based on, right? Yep. And if we get the rains at the right time, then we're going to have good quail numbers. We're going to be able to, you know, sometimes, you know, some some pairs will lay – you know, two hatches, they'll have two clutches of eggs, Mm -hmm. you know, because you can get an early hatch. You know, if we get some rains early, we can get a, you know, mid summer or, uh, you know, July, late Late spring, you know, we can get a hatch then. Um, and the, you know, a couple of years ago, whenever, you know, we were going out and bumping 10, 12 cubbies a day, you know, it was, we had ideal conditions all spring and summer. Mm -hmm. And we knew that this is like once in a lifetime, like this is once in a lifetime a bumper hatch like opportunity yeah, yeah. bumper crop shoot, yeah you know, bumper, <laughs> bumper crop, crop bumper hatch. exactly so a banger year uh, yeah. so we knew you know that that wasn't really going to last but still to go out and you know ride around for an afternoon bump five cubbies have a good time get some shooting good dog work mm-hmm. you know it's a ton of fun oh, oh for sure. it was so awesome. much yeah. fun it's it what is. everyone yeah. looks forward to uh, it's really. very it's very social you know, everybody's having a good time. We're always cutting up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, after you, you know, if you bump a covey, we typically all gather back around the buggy, load the dogs up, water them, uh, you know, hang out for a couple minutes, mm-hmm. you know. Everybody shot. Talk, talk, yeah, shit, on, shot talk shit on who missed the bird. And, right. You know, yeah. high five for the dude that smoked one. I mean, Chaz had two really good shots. I mean, other than me taking a pee when that, uh, and I knew. So I was going like, to get yeah, to that. You just stole my thunder. Yeah, so the rule yeah. is you don't break <laughs> right, the circle. Right. You no, no low shots. Right. Uh, and don't, up. Right, don't hold your that. penis yeah, while you're in the circle. Right. Keep talking. Bird, bird let's up. keep talking. We were, okay. We were on that covey. Those birds are, those dogs were in there working Here those comes birds the for a excuse. while. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're good. Time for me and to I pee. Was, we still I turned out here hunting. Take a pee, yeah. There was going to be a bird coming over my shoulder. Was your gun still loaded? Was like, your gun still yes, loaded? Bird. The yeah. first bird of the day. Man. So, man. But I went. It's one of those three never. It's one of those that. never fails things. I mean, how many times have you got out of the blind to take a leak whenever we're duck hunting? It's like, oh, here <laughs> they come! Of course. Oh my God, get in! Yeah. I knew I was never going to hear the end of that. Leave but, it to Chaz. But that was funny. I can't believe after you. that. Ugh. You shot at <laughs> two one. birds, smoke three one. birds, and you shot two of the three. That third one went down. That's no, no, it, no, no. You, you were so far. B- oh, oh, sorry. Roll the sorry. footage. We'll oh, add another we bird into it that he was claiming Raymond on, but mm-hmm. Joe shot it. Roll the yeah. footage. <laughs> footage don't lie. It doesn't. It doesn't. It and just it, didn't surprise me because if there's one guy on the team who's probably got the smallest bladder, it has to be <laughs> Justin Chaz Michaels. Yep, there you it is. You peed at least five times while we were out there. I'm just trying to stay hydrated out here. You know? <laughs> Liquid IVs, water. Uh huh. Oh come on! <laughs> I think we get a liquid come IV on. sponsor. Shout out, liquid. The, IV. Hey, liquid. Shout yeah, out, okay. liquid IV. Yeah. Shout out, no free shout outs. Why do we need that liquid IV sponsor? Because there's a lot of Crown Royal. I was just gonna say, <laughs> shout out Crown Royal and Coca Cola Zero right here. Come Dakota, on now, shout Dakota out Dakota Shot. He shot. Chaz said tonight. he's been like, hydrating. Yeah, dehydrating. Anyway, it was a fun afternoon. It was a Absolutely. great way to kind of build morale and end the, this trip. And then um, we're heading back to Kansas City tomorrow morning early. And we get back. We're probably going to be back out on the road scouting with what we got. Going to check yeah, our what's lease pond. Next? What's next for, for you? Yeah, so uh, it's going to get pretty busy. Naturally, we have uh, Wyoming coming up next. Tuesday. We'll- they leave Tuesday? You guys leave Tuesday? Who's going on that trip? I don't think your mic's turned up. There it is. Uh, it's me, Dice, Matt, and Dakota. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Shout out Q, man behind the scenes. Yes, sir. Yep. Aaron Garcia, High Plains Wing Shooting. And, we go there every year. And they've been Fantas- smashing yeah. they've Fantastic. Been oh, smashing man. Shot. Not only hey, they... Did y'all see that, uh, the video they posted the other day with the Mallards? Did y'all see oh, that yeah. video oh, they posted God. the other day of that guy yeah. missing that quail? 
I saw that last year. See that guy missing the quill? (laughs) Maybe you can redeem yourself, Q. That was Q in the quill. Yeah. That that was the most depressing moment of you missed it. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. On camera. On camera. camera. Yes. Yeah. They needed one bird for a limit and a big. I mean, not just a quill, like a trophy quill, like a trophy quill wall hanger. No. Yeah. Uh, You biffed him. Big old patch. Big old patch. The white wings. The whole nine yards. No. I will say this. <laughs> it's okay. I got a nice phone call from Logan right after, and he said... I best want to. <laughs> he said, it's okay, but you can see in the footage, footage don't lie, I did hit him. He and shot it in the just, ass. Just not very It well. doesn't matter if it doesn't <laughs> die. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I didn't know that. It does. Yeah. Anyway. It's okay. It's okay. But they, they do have a ton of numbers up there, not only with the honkers, but the ducks. Um, and it's always been a great trip. They have, they've got a, a great operation. All of their guides, guides are uh, great down to earth dudes, mm-hmm. uh, different kind of hunting there than what we're used to back home, uh, as we're typically hunting out of pits and it's usually scouting flight lines. It's like traffic and running right? traffic. Right. Exactly. Right. So right. just like picking the best it's pit running traffic with the geese not having a whole lot of places to go right, right. how many Every, pits do they have a bunch a lot oh a okay lot. Oh, so up, and that, like up and down that up and down that river oh, so it's not like three no no oh, no no, yeah. no. Yeah. no. Yeah. it's so take your pick you of the litter did, yeah. <laughs> yeah you guys did is that where you did the two shot yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. the problem yeah. the biggest problem with the two shot in my opinion is and they do it by design it's it's the smart timing of doing it but when they do it early December, the birds aren't there. Like January is the time you want to go to Cold Wyoming. weather, dude. You yeah. Gotta be it's cold. just like Montana. You want to yeah. go to Montana late. Mm-hmm. You want to go to Montana hunt in January. We should yeah. do that. So can you so, elaborate? Yeah. Like what's the two shot? Like, the two shot is, okay. So, um, we, me and Ronnie have done it. We've gone and filmed a couple episodes there. We've done, we've it done it twice, twice. Um, I feel like we've been there three years, but maybe not. So basically there's two big roosts, um, where they're at in Wyoming, and basically there's, I don't know, probably 60 to 100 pits around those. And mm-hmm. it's either right. leased up or family hunts it, whatever the case may be. So um, obviously it gets cold. So back in like the late 80s, they decided that they wanted to put on like um, some sort of a charity hunt or something to pay for the aerators to keep one of the lakes open. Like a tournament, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, so yeah. that's how that started. So now they have 40 pits. Um, there's a wait list to get in. It's very mm-hmm. like, you know, if you're in, you're in type deal. And if you drop out and you know, somebody takes your spot, but you basically go in the night before and you draw for a pit or a guide. Like there's a guide for every right. pit, two man teams, you get two shells a piece and mm-hmm. basically it's the two shot. Um, you weigh your four biggest skis, mm-hmm. you yep. get two shots each, you weigh your four biggest skis and they have this huge banquet. Um, I would say a very, very large scale, like Ducks Unlimited banquet, right? Where they have yeah, auctions huge. and mm-hmm. food and they have, you know, Give all away, sorts uh, of raffles and there's all sorts of other vendors yeah. there doing different stuff. It's all charity. I mean, it's yeah. all for Goshen it, County, it, it, Wyoming. Yeah, it's a great, great event and the entire community comes to it. It's mm-hmm. it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's, it's one right. of the coolest, like, goose hunting, like, waterfowl hunting, um, I don't know what you competition. Yeah, yeah, it's a competition. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. really a competition, but like just gathering yeah. one of the coolest gatherings right. there is out there. Right. We had a and blast. It's really hard to facilitate a, that type of hunt elsewhere. I know there's a couple other, there's a couple of places like in, uh, uh, Saskatchewan or, mm-hmm. uh, Manitoba. Actually it's Manitoba that, that, right. that have done that type of stuff in the past, maybe different rules or whatever, but it's really hard to facilitate and get, 40 teams together with 40 right. I'll call them guides or shra- chaperones. Right. And it, it works out perfectly, perfectly there because they already have the pits, right? They yep. say this pits entered, this pits entered. And Aaron donates like three or four pits for the, um, for the event. And yeah, there's a lot of people in the community guides and, and just regular hunters. I mean, that's the only way you can really hunt right out there. Yeah, is they, that you get, they, you dig a pit. So their time and yep. it's a real big county gathering. 
and people from all over the state, all over the region come. Even the, the, gov- gov- the governor, the governor was, comes in every oh, single really? year. Yeah, the governor yeah. goes every year. Dang. Gov? He gets a pit. He actually he hunts in it. The yeah. governor gets a pit. Nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so the guys who are going out to Wyoming are going to be participating in this two shot, but that's how that relationship began with um, with, with High Plains Wing Shooters. With Aaron so, and them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. if you want more information about the two shot, you can go Google that. Uh, otherwise, check out High Plains Wing Shooters and... Uh, Alex, Matt, Dakota, and Q will be out there next week, and they will be bringing you more behind the blind. They're going to be dropping episodes on the Heartland Waterfowl YouTube channel of how each of the four hunts go out there, which if it's anything like I'm seeing on social media right now, they should be bangers each day. I hope so, yeah. Should be pretty good. <clears throat> and then we've got some local hunts that are going to be happening around Missouri. Obviously, we've got the uh, the the hunt with Valley Oaks right. with the winners that right. we – Drew recently that um, that will be a part of that. And then uh, we go back to Tornado Alley to finish out the season. So yep. still some more things to come before we finish the year. Hey, I'm coming back to Emporia. I'll be there too. Yeah. No, I got to go. I want to oh, give no. a shout out. I we can't have all. you both. We cannot have you both. I'm you going. Draw straws. Draw straws. I, I want to give a shout, a little, shout out to man. Kate Palumbo for letting the circus come to town this week yeah. and putting up with us. Yeah. Love you, baby. Looking for us and... Love you, Thank man. you, guys. Oh, 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 round of applause. The man, the in-studio audience is just man. going crazy. And the Thank cooking you, was phenomenal. Thank yep. you. We, Thank we you. love you. Thank you for the crane you. pot pie. Joe's a lucky man. No doubt. Yeah. That's why I married her. <laughs> That's why you, you said today. That's why I waited to make sure eight years that it took. She had what it took. Right? That's right. That's took, right. It took eight hunting seasons. Wow. Right? Make them earn it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> she, she earned did. it. Any y'all? Any y'all got... Girlfriend, <laughs> like that out there. She yeah, puts up with it. your crap. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right, so yeah. that's going to do it for Justin, Chaz, Michaels, Logan Birdit, Joe Palumbo. We're going to wrap up another. Unless anybody's got anything else, nah, anything man, else? I had a blast, dude. Yeah. I mean, Fun. cranes kicked our ass, but shit, it happens. That's right. Yeah, it, mean, happens. Honey, it happens. It happens. It happens. Once it's really been the first years. I'll take yeah, it. Dude, exactly. I'll take it. No doubt. Thank but you all for watching. Thank you, Tetra. Had a good time today. And thank you, Five Land and Holding, for having us out here. Really thank appreciate you for the it. Opportunity, Love you. Thank you for the opportunity. Pop a rom. Shout out sponsors. Check out the Pop a Rom podcast. Shout out Pop a Rom podcast. <laughs>